Hey, this is Ralph. And in this video, doing something a little bit different, not a normal class video for at all. But I was looking at one of your classmates web pages and he's a pretty skilled student. And he's got something very cool, which I'm going to do on my site. <clears throat> on his index homepage, he's got a horizontal menu going across for each module. And then each module is a drop down menu. Now normally drop down menus is something I may show you later in the term in uh, the 195 class. So I guess it's it's not bad. It's it's there's certainly some good stuff there to explore, but I just don't want to overwhelm people. But I'm going to kind of do this a little bit on the down low. Uh, the link to this video I will stick somewhere, but maybe not where not anywhere overly obvious. And yeah, people will see it or they won't, and people will view the source code or they won't, and we'll move on from there. But I'm definitely getting tired of my, my current index homepage. So on my VS Code, I've got my index open. This is what it is right now, but I'm going to go ahead and do a couple things. I'm going to cannibalize uh, some of my other pages here. In fact, let me just move this over. No, nah, no, nah, I guess it's fine just like that. <clears throat> I'm going to go to my Module 2 page. And we've got these um, links here for Google Fonts. And yeah, I, I don't remember exactly what they look like, but I'm going to put those on my index and I'll stick them right here. Okay, it is important that those Google Font links go before my internal styles. I'm going to keep using internal styles. We haven't done external style sheets yet in the class. And that's fine. Um, I'll still stick with the internal styles. And it's, it's appropriate too, because my index is just one page and I'm not going to style other pages in the same way. So I think I'm still good with that. However, I do need to keep an eye on <clears throat> how I do these H1s. I want to get that because I want to make sure I get the, uh, I want to make sure I get this font family. I'll just grab that. Pop it in here. And let's see, do I have two fonts on here that I can play with? I do. There's a yellow tail. I don't know. Oh, that's right. I think yellow tails. Yeah, it's kind of a wacky looking font. I don't know if I'm going to use that very much. But I'm going to take the comment of it just as a reminder to myself. <clears throat> and I'll put that there as well. Otherwise, I think I'm okay for now. Let's see how this page, oh no, I take that back. I'm actually gonna do a really dramatic here. I'm gonna get rid of this nav. This nav is ultimately gonna be rebuilt. And I'm gonna get rid of this pic picture. That's ultimately gonna be re rebuilt. And I would like to do something kind of like we did before um, on our Monday week three class where my portfolio homepage stuff, this is kind of centered. I'm gonna take out that paragraph. And I'm going to do a break and a span. I'll put my name in here. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll, I'll just, welcome to my CIS 195 portfolio and homepage. Yeah. I think that's good. I've got the name of our class in there. I've got that H1. I'm gonna hit the go live button. Let's see how this looks. Okay, it's all up there at the top. I was experimenting. I was showing one of your classmates at the end of class after I turned off the recorder, another pseudo element first letter. I'm gonna take that out. <clears throat> I really do like that Rebecca purple. Um, that's a, uh, named after Eric Meyer's daughter. Eric Meyer is a, a very well-known web designer, author, and uh, lecturer. Been around for a long time. But I'm going to change the body of my page to a background image. Linear gradient. <clears throat> and let's go Rebecca Purple to 404, which is a really dark purple. Um, 
Yeah, let's give that a shot. Now when you do a back, oops, control Z. When you do a background image, that overwrites, or covers up, I should say, the background color. So, ah, I get this. Now I'm getting kind of this stripe pattern, but I'm getting a stripe pattern, not because I'm doing repeating linear gradient, like we did stripes the other day. I'm getting this stripe pattern because my body of my page doesn't know how tall to be. It's all scrunched up because I've deleted all the content. So, <clears throat> I am gonna be doing this. Min height, 100 VHs. And that'll help stretch that out so it, it lasts at least as long there. Now don't forget, we can change the angle of that gradient. I could say something like uh, 45 degrees in front of the first color. And that'll go from the bottom left to the top right. I'm feeling good about that. I'm gonna go to my headline one. I'm gonna get rid of that bottom border. Actually, I kinda like it. Actually, kinda dig that border. <clears throat> Now, the other day in class, I did come up with a color scheme. And was I smart enough to save it? Oh, I did. I saved it here, my color palette. So don't forget, I've got this color palette that I'd like to use. And in fact, I've got that shade of lavender or whatever, mountain, mountain batten pink. 8E7C93, 8E7C93. Eight E seven nine C three. Yeah, there we go. So we'll change out to that purple. All right, I can dig it. Because <clears throat> I would like to use my colors on there. And if I go back to my color palette, there we got that. And there's that platinum E seven E seven E seven super light gray, almost white. So I can go to this paragraph or my headline one. Oops, I'm gonna get rid of this because I don't have that paragraph anymore. Don't have that nav anymore, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm gonna get rid of all this too. <clears throat> Getting rid of a lot of stuff. Remember this, even though I haven't gotten to it yet, this video is gonna focus on my navigation menu. And I'm just kind of doing a little bit of other setup. Um, so I'm gonna stick with this uh, border, I think, on the H1. So I'm going to do a border top, two pixels, solid, E7, E7, E7. And I'm going to, don't forget, I can just click on a line, control C, control V to duplicate it. And I'll do a border bottom. <clears throat> so that's going to give me a top and bottom border there. You can't really see the top border, but once I move this down, you will be able to see it perfectly well. And I'm going to change those colors of that text, too. But let's get this moved down. Now, to move this down, I'm going to do something I haven't done in class yet, but I do like this technique. I'm going to create a div, id equals, you haven't seen me do an id in class yet either, but id wrapper. And I'm going to take the closing div for this, and it's going to go all the way down here. There we go. So... Basically, my entire page is going to be contained within this wrapper div. <clears throat> now, the only reason I'm doing that is because it's going to give me something to manipulate other than the body, um, which for the most part can be okay. But it's, it's, a, it's a very common technique just to have this wrapper. Sometimes we use container. I typically call it container. I don't know why I called it wrapper today, but um, web des developers will call it a container, call it a wrapper. doesn't really matter. But I'm giving it an ID, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this wrapper, hashtag wrapper, and I'm gonna do a position, no, <clears throat> display flex is what I'm gonna do, because this is what we did in class the other day. Display flex, justify content center, and then I'm going to go to my H1, which is up here. And I'm going to do align self center. I didn't do anything very exciting. My wrapper doesn't know how tall to be. So I'm going to set the min height. Now I'm going to set the height to 100%. Okay. <clears throat> It's not doing what I would expect, so can you see my mistake? I misspelled the word wrapper. 
Mm -hmm. All right, so we're starting to get something here. But still, my wrapper doesn't look exactly like what I would have expected. So in the short term, border to pixels. Solid, if I can spell red. Let's see how that looks. Ah, so my wrapper really doesn't know how tall to be. And I think it's because of this height. If I went for VHs, that would take care of it. So when I set it to 100%, 100% is based on its parent, and its parent is the body, and the body still doesn't know how tall to be. Even though I told my body to be a minimum height here of 100 VHs, it still doesn't quite understand um, what is going on there. So if I took that out of the body, oh, it did collapse, so my body did know to do that. But my H1, or my wrapper inside, its height of 100%. Wait, is that what I had? Nope. Yeah, 100 VHs, viewport heights. However, I'm going to try this. I'm going to do a min height because I want this wrapper to be able to stretch if necessary. A min height of 100%. Let's see if this gets me where I want to be. Doesn't look like it's doing that. Minimum height of 100 VHs. That is working. And my body has a minimum height. Yeah, I, I definitely want to use the minimum height because there could be more content on this page, which gets things stretched out. But I'm probably not going to have too much more on here. So I think I'm okay with this for now. And that is my main wrapper. In fact, I'm going to kind of mix things up here on you. I may later on in this term put other content on here, which is going to be dramatically different, but below the wrapper. So I'm going to change things up. Instead of div, I'm going to call this main. And so now I have a main section, which means I can put in the future, a little more easily, other stuff here. So I'm using the main tags. I haven't used those in class either. So I'm going to use main, which means I'll take this instead of wrapper. We'll call that main. I just use a type selector since I'm referring to a tag. No hashtag, no dot or anything, just the name of the tag. And I think I might still be in good shape. Yes, I'm still in good shape there. Let me go ahead and uh, get rid of that border, which I have on the main. And I'm gonna add a little padding. Um, 24 pixels top and bottom, zero pixels left and right is fine get a little bit more space. I don't like that color. So I'm going to look at my color palette. I'm going to go for this pumpkin. FC7A1E. 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 <clears throat> there we go. Should be using variables for this, but I'm not going to do variables today. All right. Feeling a little bit better about that. Um, I want the text to pop a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and do some text shadow, one pixel, one pixel, two pixels of blur, and I'll just go for something dark. There we go. All right, I think that's okay. Um, I'm not as into those borders like I was before. On my color palette, do I have something a little more subtle? Yeah, I'm gonna do that mountain pink. I've already used that color once somewhere, right up here. So I'm just gonna copy this. Now this means my little border lines are gonna be really hard to notice. But I am okay with that. They're gonna be just really faint little lines there. I kinda of like that better. And kind of takes away, it, it helps focus the eye on the lettering. And I'm good with that. I'm going to style my name a little bit differently. So I'm going to do Descendant Selector H1 Span. Because remember, my name is wrapped in a set of span tags. And I can do something different here. Um, Ebony, 4A52040, 4A5240. Cool, I can handle that. Makes my name a little bit more subtle. I'm good with that. And let's see, I'm going to I 
I want to make sure this is on its own line. So I'm going to do display block. <clears throat> Doesn't look any different here, but that actually helps. That helps to ensure that my name is on its own line because I don't think I used a break tag, did I? I did use a break tag. So even if I didn't have a break tag now, my name should be on its own line. So I'll take away the break tag and there we go. Name is on its own line. And just to prove it to you, if I didn't have this in there, my name would not be on its own line. Okay. So I'm going to put that back. Display block puts it on its own line. And let's see. Margin. 12 pixels top and bottom. Actually, left and right is okay. Great. A little bit more spacing there. All right. Finally, navigation menu. So my navigation menu is actually going to be placed up here at the top. I'm going to put it above the main. Is this going to hurt me? It may. But my intention is still, I'm going to do a position fixed on this ultimately. So it really doesn't matter that my nav menu is going to be up here. So I'm going to say nav. And I'm going to do an unordered list, which is a bulleted list, very common for navigation menus. And then I'm going to do list item href equals, I'll just do a, let's see, what do I want to do here? Yeah, I'm just going to do a hashtag there for now. And I'm going to have module one. I think that's pretty good, but I want this to be an anchor tag. That's the way I should do it. For some reason, I was sticking the href in the list item. It's been a while since I've made one of these, so. All right, let me go ahead and copy and paste, 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 paste. We've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine modules. <clears throat> now, for the most part, we can ignore this, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wrap the word module in a set of span tags. And the only reason I'm doing this, because I'm kind of thinking ahead a little bit. In fact, I'm going to take away that space too. The only reason I'm doing it this way is because I'm thinking if this is going to be responsive to a phone, I'm not going to have words for the words module all the way across, but I don't want to do a vertical menu or some other kind of hidden menu. I still want people to go to this website on a phone and see the module numbers one through nine across the top of the page. So what I think I will do in the future is I'm going to on mobile devices, get rid of the word module. So it's just going to be the number there. It's going to be a little bit confusing and cryptic, but I think it'll be kind of cool. And obviously the people going to this page are going to be people that have a good feel for what's going on. So let me just go through and uh, replace this. Now I can replace all of these at once. So I can do, uh, what is it? Control shift down arrow. No, that's not it. It's uh, on Visual Studio Code. Is it Control Alt down arrow? Yes. So I can do all of those, and now I can delete multiple rows at once, and then Control V as in Victor to paste to pop all of those in there. So it's a little bit more consistent, or it's a little bit faster if you're editing multiple rows in the same way or similar way. Okay, that's pretty good. <clears throat> this is going to be the start of a horizontal menu, not the drop-down menu portion. We'll do that momentarily. So this is going to look pretty butt ugly at the moment. But there's my nav menu over there, and it is impacting this. Let's go ahead and fix things. So I am going to take my nav, position fixed. And I'm going to go and do uh, top 0, left 0, width 100%. There we go. And that'll at least get my nav up there. You can't tell because I don't have a border on it. But you'll notice that my headline text popped right back up to the middle. That's because now that I've got position fixed on this nav, it's taken out of the normal flow of content. And so it's like it doesn't really exist, or at least my headline doesn't know about it. All right, feels pretty good about that. Let's uh, move on to some other stuff here. The nav unordered list. <clears throat> 
Let's do a child selector. There we go. Child selector. So this is the immediate unordered list child of the nav, not a descendant selector. The reason I'm doing this is because there's a good chance I'm going to have other unordered lists very, very soon. And I don't want those other unordered lists to be impacted by this particular CSS rule. And <clears throat> I don't really want to do too much with this right now. I'll show you, but I will do this. Uh, I'll go ahead and say uh, border to pick solid red so that we can see it. Take that back. I'm going to do yellow so it'll stand out a little bit more. I forgot I got that purple background. Um, and I'm going to just do that. I want you to see some stuff here pretty soon. Before I do that, we'll do white borders there. Yeah, let's see how that looks. <clears throat> okay, I want you to be able to see these white bordered list items are all one on top of the other. They're block elements. That's what they like to do, right? So I'm going to take these list items and instead I'm going to make them, this would be a good opportunity for flex. All right, I will do that. I'm going to go to my unordered list and I'm going to display flex, make it a flex box parent or a grid, but we'll do flex here. <clears throat> and then I'll take these list items and we will uh, flex one zero auto I think will be sufficient and let me go ahead and make sure I do a flex direction row that's what it is by default but I just want to kind of confirm that and now they're all the way across you see the little bullets on there from the bulleted list I can do that either place unordered list up here list style none to get rid of those bullets there we go so things are nicely placed across there next nav unordered list li anchor these are the primary hyperlinks that are a child of my list item which is a child of the unordered list which is a child of the nav I'm going to take these anchors and text align center get that text centered in there come on oh we don't see it yet because I'm missing a step and take these anchors and display block and I'm also going to set their width to 100% and their height to 100%. Now, you're thinking, well, 100% of what? It's gonna be 100% of the list item. So basically, the anchor is inside of the list item, and I want the anchor to fill up the list item. And that's gonna allow that to happen. You'd see it even better if I had a, a border or a background color on the anchor, but just go ahead and trust me for this one. And my list item could be a lot more interesting, a little bit taller. I'm gonna set the height of my list item to, uh, 48 pixels. Make it a bit taller. <clears throat> and could have done that. Yeah, actually, I'm going to take that back. Instead of setting my height that way, I'm going to go to the anchor itself and I'll do padding 24 pixels top and bottom. That's going to make it at least 48 pixels tall. Technically, it'll be taller than 48 pixels because of the height of the text itself. But this will give me nice vertical centering of the text, and it makes the whole thing a nice clickable zone. So that works out really well there. So now we've got this nice little menu going across. Let's do a few other things to the anchors so it really stands out. Text decoration, none, gets rid of the underline. And the color that I want to use, do I want to use the orange or do I want to use that white color? I'm going to use the white color. That was a E7, E7, E7. There we go. Now you notice my letters and numbers are all scrunched up. Um, I did that for something I might do in the future, but we can remedy that now. I can say nav a span. <clears throat> this is a descendant selector. The span that's within the anchor that's within the nav. I know I'm not using all the little child selector units. Should be fine. And I'm going to do padding right 8 pixels. That'll put a little bit of padding on the right of each of those spans, which gives me that little bit of separation. And then later on, when I say I don't want those spans to be around, this is what you can do. I could go to this and I could say something like display none. 
and now the spans are gone and we just have the numbers in place. That's kind of what I'm thinking will happen on a phone device. Let me control Z, put that back. And there we go. So this is the main part of our nav menu. We can do a little hover effect on this too, right? Um, I'm just gonna copy all of this. And I'll paste it here. But this is a colon hover, which is a pseudo class. And I'm gonna change the background color to, have I not used a color? Ooh, I'll do pumpkin. Yeah, I think I've already got that pumpkin used somewhere, right? On my H1. Copy, hover, 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 background color, paste. I don't think my white text is gonna look really good there, so I'm gonna change the color of the text to 222. So now, hover over that. Very, very easily obvious which hyperlink I'm about to click on. Okay, feeling pretty good about this so far. Now I wanna do the drop down portion of this. Actually, that 24 pixels is kind of overwhelming me. I'm gonna dial this down to 20 pixels. Make it just a wee bit smaller, maybe a little smaller. 18 pixels looks good. All right, I can handle that. Now for the drop down menu portion, doesn't matter where we do this at, we're gonna do it one place and then we can copy and paste later. I'm gonna pick on module three. I'm gonna put my insertion point after the anchor tag, before the closing list item tag, press my enter key a few times, give myself room to work. And then inside here, I'm gonna do another unordered list. Get rid of that extra line space there. And I'm gonna do a list item with an anchor. We'll just make it generic for now. And this will be a sub item 3A. And then I'm going to copy, paste, paste, sub item 3B, sub item 3C. <clears throat> so what I've got going on here is I have an unordered list within a list item. That's how you do an outline. Or if you want to put a, you know, kind of like if you're doing a bulleted list, then you want to indent, you want to do Roman numerals, indent, then you want to do uh, alphabet, you know, ABC. <clears throat> do it just like that. Now, this is gonna look a little bit weird and sloppy. There's my little uh, 3A right there, and it's it's totally impacted my main menu, but that's okay. We're in the middle of surgery right now, and things are looking a little bit messy. But we're gonna clean things up, irrigate, stitch, all that fun stuff. So the HTML, though, I think I'm good with for now. So I'm gonna ignore it as it is. I'm not worried about the spans. I'm not, you know, not getting too complicated. In fact, these are probably gonna end up being longer text descriptions because even on a phone, I think it'll be okay. Because <clears throat> on a phone, you know, I might want those to spread out and take up the full width. But we'll worry about that later on. Otherwise, HTML is pretty good. Now, to make my life a little bit easier and to make it a little bit easier for me, to, for you to kind of see what I'm doing, I will do this. I'm going to do ul class equals nav sub. I'll just call it sub menu submenu. That'll give us something to focus our attention on when we style. I'm going to head up to my list item and I'm going to do position relative. The reason I'm doing position relative is because I'm going to position absolute the submenu. So I'm going to move down here dot submenu so that you can clearly see it now remember, my submenu is an unordered list. So I could write it this way, and I will. ul.submenu. No spaces in there. That's just to clarify specifically that my submenu class is on an unordered list element. It would work without the ul on there, but I just wanted to hit home or, you know, that this is in an unordered list. And I'm going to go ahead and do a border. <clears throat> Two pixels, a solid. I'm going to do yellow again, but I'll change it to four pixels so it's a little bit thicker. And I'm also going to get rid of any other borders that I might be using, which will be a distraction. So I'll get rid of that border. And do I not have any other borders? I thought I did. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I've got white border somewhere. Ah, there it is. Okay, so now we can see, ooh, wow, that submenu is kind of like where it should be and stuff like that. So things are going pretty well here. 
So now I'm going to go to my submenu and I'm going to say position absolute. I'm going to say bottom, <clears throat> bottom zero, left zero. And okay, it's actually doing what it's supposed to do. But I would really like to push this a little bit further down. So I want it to be down below the module three menu item. So instead of saying bottom zero, I'm gonna try it this way. I'm gonna go from the top, which is weird, but then I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go 100% from the top. And now that sub menu is just beneath that main menu item. Excellent, that's what I want it to do. All right, sub menu. I can also list style none to get rid of the bullets. Get rid of them bullets. <laughs> and all right, looking better. And I'm also going to set the width of this. Hmm. Now, this is where it might get, yeah, this is going to get a little bit messy later on. I'm already starting to think about, you know, if this was a phone, if this was narrow, I'd want this to stretch out, take up the full width of the page. But now I'm worried if I go too wide, if I go to like module nine, it's not going to look quite right. But you know what I can do? I can still do width of 100% because its width will still be based on the width of its parent, which is the list item. My main list item's width will establish the width here. So... I could do this, and that'll be fine for desktop. It may not look so hot, you know, for phone, but we'll fix it up for phones later on. All right, I think this is going rather well. So let's style these submenu items. So unordered list submenu list items. I'm going to set the height. I'm going to be more specific with this one. I'm still going to set something like 48 pixels. I am picking that number for a reason, by the way. I think it's a good number to use for a person's finger on a device. You don't want to really be anything smaller than 48 pixels um, for someone to tap on something. Um, so that way it's nice and clickable. Again, I'm still thinking about phone users here. So I will do that. I'm also going to do this dot submenu space anchor. Notice I'm just doing descendant selectors. I'm not going through the whole path. With descendant selectors, I can be much more open, especially since I classified this as a submenu. I can say just the anchors in the submenu are going to have this styling. Again, I will do display block, and I'm going to do a width 100% and a height of 100%. There we go. Yeah, it's actually going pretty well here. Um... Text decoration, none. Text align center, color, hashtag, E7, E7, E7. <clears throat> All right, I'm feeling pretty good about this, but let me go ahead and do a list item background color. Now I've got white text, so I wanna do something kind of dark and I feel like I've used a lot of these colors already, but again, I think I'll do this uh, 8E7 one. I've got that somewhere. There it is. It should be pretty subtle on top of that gradient background. Oops, I meant to put it up here with the list item. I think I could have done it either place. Actually, I am going to do it down here with the anchor instead of the list item. Oops, get my semicolon. Semicolon on the very last declaration, technically not necessary, but I think it's a fantastic habit. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Now, I know it needs to be cleaned up style-wise, but um, let's do a little bit of experimentation. I'm going to get rid of this yellow border. And then I'm going to go to my submenu, and I'm going to say display none. It's gone away. Now, I want it to come back, though, sometimes, right? So I want it to come back when somebody hovers over the parent list item. 
So I'm going to write it up here. Nav child unordered list child list item colon hover space dot or unordered list dot submenu. Display block. So when I hover over the list item, the submenu is going to redisplay. And there it is. So now I can move down. Ah, you notice I can't ooze. When I go slow, well, it seems to work. Maybe I just clicked away too easily. All right, that's actually working pretty well. Go away, come back. Um, some vertical centering would be kind of nice here. So I will do it this way. My submenu list items is 48 pixels tall. I'm going to go to my anchor tag. Line height 24 pixels. And no, I want 48 pixels. It's been a while since I've done this. Yeah. See, why does that go away sometimes? I have a theory, but I want it to be more consistent. Okay, let me do a hard refresh. All right, I think we're doing pretty well. So, <clears throat> unordered list dot sub menu a colon hover background color. What do I want? I'm running out of colors. Go for that really light color. Sure. Yeah, let's try it. E7, E7, E7. I want the color of the font to be dark. Yeah, so that's the idea. Let's see, I would like my module three orange highlighting to stay highlighted orange even when I'm down here. That's what I would like it to be. I think I can write it this way. <clears throat> How am I going to write it? I'll write it up here since it's kind of with this. It's right up in here, I think. Nav, unordered list, list item, colon hover, A, background color. And I want that pumpkin color. There it is right there. Copy, paste, semicolon. Ah, okay, well, it's kind of doing what I thought, but the list item background color is affecting all of those others, and I don't necessarily, I can't remember what I had before, no. I think I just had that purplish color. That's okay, I will remedy that. And I'm gonna take the background color, which I have right here for my anchors in the submenu, and I'm gonna put it on the list item. I think I originally planned on doing that. In fact, I may not need it for the anchor. Let's see how that's looking. Not looking nearly like what I was hoping for. Even though that looks good. Let me put it back in here. All right, submenu, anchors. The list item is purple. The anchor is purple. Hover goes to white. Let's see. Ooh, you know what? I can do this. Where did I go that orange? It was uh, this one right here. Child anchor. I think that may take care of it. There we go. That's what I want to do. All right. So that's the basic. Oh, see, it keeps disappearing on me inconsistently though but I don't know if I'm just hovering in a weird way if that keeps doing that I do have a solution but it looks like it's working the way I've done this here so I don't necessarily want to show you the potential fix if there's not a true legitimate problem there so that's basically the idea behind the drop-down menu okay so let me just clean up some of the HTML a bit. So I do have several pages. Well, actually, I don't have many pages at all, but I do have the class page we made on Monday. And that was 
mod three right there. It's my color theory. Okay. Experimenting with color. Now, see, this is where, yeah, the text just getting a little bit wide. So I'm kind of curious what happens if this was even wider. Yeah, so it's going to start to wrap in an unpleasant way. So we will have to remedy that. There are ways to do it. Basically, I want to set, um, instead of setting widths, I want to set some min widths, probably. And that'll be an issue over here for Module 9 later on. But for now, I think we'll try to go super subtle here. Um, let's see, what else can I do? I can head down to the HTML side of things. I'm going to grab... Now notice where I'm selecting. I'm selecting from the just to the right of the closing anchor tag of my module three all the way down to in front of the closing list item tag for module three. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go to each of these list items right in front of the closing list item tag and paste. It's very confusing to look at it this way and I've already doubled up somewhere I think. Um, so let me control Z to undo. Okay, reset for a moment. Let me do the bottom ones first. I'll go down here, control V is in Victor. I'm going, then, then there, there we go. There's five, I wanna get that one. I wanna get six, there's that one. There's seven in front of that one. Eight in front of that one. Nine in front of there. Now I can go back, take care of two in front of the list item, and then in front of one list item. There we go. And basically that's gonna create the submenus for each of those modules there. The spirit on me. Am I just going too fast? Maybe I'm just moving my mouse a little bit too fast. Yeah, I'm moving it downward and I think that's what's causing it to disappear. But otherwise, I think we're in pretty good shape here for now. So we'll go ahead and call this good. And I actually am going to publish this. So let's see, I still have my WinSCP open. I'll take my index, which is fresh. It's October 10th, 1.50 p.m. That's fresh. Just drag it on over. And now that is over there, which means if I go to my website and hit refresh, there you go. There's the new stuff. And uh, yeah, not too bad. And I suppose I do have, I have a module two page. I have a couple of module two pages. So I can go to my module two section right here. I'll change this out to mod2 HTML basics. And I can do another link in module2 HTML and style basics. HTML and style, we'll do that one. Okay, go back to WinSAP, republish, back to the web. Refresh, module two, HTML basics, looks good. Module two, HTML and style, looks good. Oh, that's right, I forgot we did that um, little COCC thing there with the shapes, that's kind of neat. <clears throat> okay, so there's the start of my drop down menu. And uh, yeah, we'll be tweaking it along the way, I think. There's uh, definitely some issues that I want to contend with, like longer file names. And Obviously, at some point in a few weeks, I want to make sure this is still responsive and looks good for a narrow device phone. So if you've watched me this far, thanks for hanging out with me.